Hey everybody, I hope you're all well. Um, well, I've not really done this before. Um, it was uh, <coughs> my partner's idea. She said, do you fancy doing a live stream tonight? Because she wanted to go and see some friends um, she don't see very often. So I thought, you know what, yeah, cool, because the weather's been nice, it's been an awesome day. And I thought, um, okay, we can talk about anything prepping related, all, all that sort of stuff. But um, oh, guess what, before we go, can you tell me if you're seeing and hearing me okay? I forgot, I should have done that first. Okay, so we're gonna, <coughs> excuse me, wait for the, the lag. I'm not using my posh microphones tonight. Um, it's been a bit of a weird one, so hopefully you can hear me okay. You should be able to see me right, because the webcam's pretty decent. Um, here we go. Nikki, you're the first, thank you. All good then, loud and clear, sweet. So yeah, everything was all sort of um, planned and everything was cool. And like I said, we can talk about anything prep and related. I find it very easy. Any questions, I've always got answers for pretty much or some sort of advice, which is gonna help anyway. So we was all set to go and <laughs> recently got some really bad news. Yeah. And um, it's, it's just popped on Instagram literally a few hours ago. And, you know, forgive me if this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a damp squib sort of live stream. <clears throat> I wasn't even, I was going to cancel it, to be honest. But I thought, do you know what? Just carry on. And yeah, bad news is um, one of our friends in the knife community in the UK has just passed away. And um, some of you guys um, would know um, I posted it on Instagram not that long ago. So if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, um, there's a bit of blurb about it there. But this guy was um, a great friend of mine, going right back to 2012 when I started this crazy YouTube hobby, which has turned into um, my livelihood now. And I met this guy. Um, his name is Jim Salford. Okay. And um, his YouTube channel used to be called um, Nicest Knives. And I think when things started going crazy um, just before and around the, the issue in 2020, I think he changed his name to Grummish. Now, Grummish, as he, he told me, because we used to chat a fair bit, okay, um, he used to be banging to D&D &D Dungeons and Dragons years ago, and that was his D&D &D master's name. So I thought, oh, cool. I think he was worried about knife laws and stuff, and he was really um, one for abiding by the law, should we say. So, and um, yeah, unfortunately, he's passed away. Um, I got um, um, the news from a guy called Knife Tex, um, awesome guy, out in Texas, obviously. Um, and yeah, so Chad and Amos and a few other people, um, we all knew Jim really well. And, you know, you can go to his um, YouTube channel. In fact, I run out of time to put his um, channel on there. But if you type in G-R-U-M-M-A-S-H, you will see it. He's only got a couple of thousand subscribers. But with Jim, you know, it... so yeah, it's been a bit weird. And, um, you know, for the last couple of hours, rather than preparing for tonight's live stream, I found myself watching some of his videos because I um, appear... Um, with VRs, which used to be video responses uh, back in the day when YouTube was, you know, non-political as it were. And, um, yeah, I want to play this only a full second clip and see if you guys remember it. Hello, everybody. That was Jim. So he is no longer with us. And it's weird saying that I've got goosebumps all over me and it's weird because I was watching one of the um, video responses that he done because I used to do loads of competitions I gave away thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds worth of stuff back in the day and um, he used to went to loads of the competitions and he won a few as well and one of them he was um, lied up in bed he was um, really poorly he had like really bad um, nerve damage in his spine which led to his, his feet and his hands and his legs being really painful and really problematic. So managing pain was a tough gig for Jim. And um, he actually said in a video response, you know, what he admired about me was no matter how bad things looked, you know, there's always a way and you just got to carry on. And that was the attitude 
which he um, adopted to make that particular video when he was in bed in lots of pain and he still managed to do a video response so for him saying that to me which I saw about an hour ago I thought you know what I'm not going to cancel the live stream and um, you know fall into a bottle of booze I thought you know what let's dedicate this um, live stream for a amount of time anyway um, to Jim and it was Jim who um, got me into the King George pint pot and it's funny because he said that he had two and he, he loved them and he sent one to me which is that one right there I've just showed you and I think it was about a year or two later or sometime after that actually I found um, three in a charity shop and they're all really good Nick I bought them all I gave one to my dad and one for myself and I sent one back to Jim um, because I was worried that if he dropped it it smashed and he gave one his second one to me he'd have nothing so it's probably still um, sat in his cupboard in the kitchen somewhere or whatever and um, yeah he was um, a cellar man um, in a bikers pub so you can imagine how rowdy that was in Salford back in the day and um, such a lovely fella so quick witted very intelligent as well and I think what spurred me to do in this live stream about um, community and sticking together was as soon as the issue happened in 2020 and that coincided roughly around about the time of Brexit it became apparent that his views and my views um, was massively different in the political spectrum so what I've taken from that was we was both um, man enough not to be offended and we both rattled off some really strong political commentary since 2020 until now recently and we still remain friends so he was the opposite of me and indeed lots of us um, yes um, that happened to him um, yes he was very liberal yes he was very left um, and all of this sort of stuff and climate change so he's complete opposite of my views politically but because we are adults and we go back a long way we set those differences aside and we still carried on chatting and in fact it was really heartbreaking going through the comments on Instagram privately and his last words were to me are we still mates <laughs> and I just replied oh, of course we are you silly so blah 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 and he liked it and uh, that was that so it's a strange um, concept of division um, because you've heard that term divide and conquer right most of us have and it goes back way before the Roman Empire okay <clears throat> so look where we are now we are all divided we are all compartmentalized into separate compartments okay um, you've got um, preppers you've got awake preppers you've got asleep preppers it's just it's ridiculous you've got the left you've got the right you've got the pro this you've got the anti this and all of the time them labels are attached to something there's going to be problems and ever since <coughs> excuse me ever since 2020 obviously it's literally split the planet not the planet itself but the people on the planet in half 50 50 so those who believe the mainstream narrative and those who question it and unfortunately some of you guys and um, some lots of people I know um, have had similar things especially within their family you know I've got a friend I'm not going to mention on here but um, her brother um, agrees with the mainstream narrative and she doesn't and that is just one example out of probably thousands which I could try and dig deep and rattle off but it's true and you know like I've said in previous videos the people or whoever they are above and behind government etc pulling all of the strings etc they love it <laughs> they love seeing us arguing okay and it's just one of them things you know and it works and it works very very well I mean I feel sorry for people um, who have families and the family's been split I mean I've got a best friend of mine who I met at art college his name's Darren as well and you know we've been best mates for a long time 
So I sort of um, turned away from him for about four years or so when I went on to a strange alternative path, should we say, in the early 90s. And when all of that finished and I'll come to my senses, I literally just turned up one day, knocked on his door, and it was like we haven't seen each other since yesterday. So a really good friend, and we go back a way long time. But the same sort of thing was happening with him. He was literally um, turned out to be like far left and going along with everything that the mainstream was putting out. And we we argued about it and this, that and the other. And it got to that point, I think it was 2020, 2021, something like that. You know, we had so many um, disagreements, just like I had with Jim. And, you know, that was it. I just said, like, that's it. So I blocked him, removed his number from my phone. And it got me thinking before I'd done this live stream. Do you know what? After what's happened with Jim, that scenario, that situation, you know, I was in two minds to contact him out of the blue and just say, look, do you know what? <laughs> what's happened? We've all been played pretty much we've all been played and the longer that this goes on the more segregation separation division pigeonholing all of that stuff the more that that expands you know we are pretty much going to end up in a scenario which we we dread in the back of our minds in the near distant future maybe over the next five or ten years maybe but the only way that we can stop all of this and it's probably a cliche, you know, you've heard people like Bob Marley sing about all of this. Unity, we all need to set aside our differences and just to say no to them assholes up top. Because it is them who has literally um, divided us. Because when you look how human beings are, and especially with kids, they just literally just want to copy everything they see because they believe that's what they need to do. They have that overwhelming desire to fit in. And, you know, a father myself, you know, I see it. Whatever he sees on YouTube, some kid's got a toy. Oh, I want that. Just because what I'm saying is, is kids are so impressionable. And adults, as we are supposed to be, we are no different. We are so easily manipulated. We are. And the powers that be know this. And don't forget the things that I've said before. In their arsenal, they have many, many great minds um, working for them. And I suspect a lot of those great minds um, have had and continually um, get serious threats that if you don't toe the line, will get rid of you and get someone else. So whether they like what they're doing or not, whether they can see where this agenda is going or not, they toe the line. Okay. So don't forget, they've got these great minds working for them. They've got unlimited funds. I mean unlimited. Like I've said in previous videos, when you see the, the top 100 Forbes list of richest people, that's complete BS. Okay? Like I've said, the real money, the real power, those people are never known anywhere. Okay? You could literally walk past one of them down the street and you would never know. You would never know what that person is, what they do, how much money they've got, how many luxurious properties around the world they've got, etc. So they've got money, they've got mines, and also they've got military on their sides. And military, the only way military works is if they follow orders without question. Let that sink in without question, okay? It's literally, I mean, I've gone through the military, albeit very small compared to lots of combat veterans out there who probably watching now. It's literally, they beat the humanity out of you until you turn into a machine that does as it's told. Like I've said, that happens in the school system. Kids, you know, if you don't do as you're told, you don't get high marks. Um, you get back squatted. Sorry, um, you go back down the class or whatever it is and you struggle and you end up with all of the the problem kids who have got broken families, etc. So they've got military, they've got all of the brains, they've got all of the money on their side. And it's winning, it's working. Because all the time they set up all of these little psyops, psychological operations globally, the more that we, we're wasting our valuable 
amazing precious energy on arguing with other people all because of opinions when you think about it life is all about opinions okay every book that's ever been written it's all about someone's opinion of how they perceive a certain thing which they're writing about and it's weird i'm sorry this is going a bit deep and yeah usually i have like a bit of a fun q a live stream on a saturday but that's how i see the world and that's how i see it going and how hard can it be to just say for argument's sake if if your best friend right is has the complete opposite views to you politically what are the chances of you two carrying on that friendship without any falling out and when you put into the equation maybe smoking some weed or doing some drugs or having some alcohol you get a bit more relaxed your tongue gets loose and you can easily say something out of turn and it's very difficult so yes it is a weird one um and do you know what Bef just before I, I clicked the go live button as it were i just remembered a few of the other guys who were in our prepping community who are no longer with us now some of you guys may know these names most of you probably won't but who remembers Effie Jr? His name was Savas. Lovely guy, a heart of gold. He really was. He was a tiny little guy. <coughs> and lots of people ribbed him um, for his size and, and how he spoke and stuff like this. But, you know, he he met up with lots of other um, outdoorsy guys and used to do overnight camps. He used to send loads of people gifts out of the corners of his heart. Now, he died um, pretty much suddenly. And that was a big shock to a community back in the day. Then, of course, moving on to um, a real good friend of mine, Lee, Lee Bennett, LB Custom Knives. He was probably one of the most talented knife makers in the UK at the time. And should he still be here now, I would imagine he will probably be living in Italy, probably earning about 15,000 euros a week, making really nice knives, maybe a lot more than that. But, you know, nonetheless, he is no longer with us. That was around 2016. Um, and then there was um, Dave, Dave Wilds Camping. Some of you guys uh, may have seen Dave, Dave's Wild Camping. And <laughs> some of the stuff that he done was hilarious. What he used to do is <clears throat> maybe he'd go out on his own, but often he went out of um, one or two other friends. They would... Um, um, arrive at midday or something like that at a pub have a nice big um, dinner and have quite a few drinks and then just literally walk up to the top of mountains set their little tents up um, go inside cook some more food and have more drinks and then some there was one video which I'd love to see again but I can't find it he went up on top of this mountain and the winds he was with a friend of mine Paul the must 28 his name is and they had one of those orchestral wind um, recorders wherever they are 87 mile an hour winds up there and his tent was blowing bending all over the place it was one of the funniest things i've seen on youtube because they're drunk big time and they're up there with all of that going on and dave's laughing was so contagious he laughed and laughed and laughed i was watching it i think i watched that video four times on the trot when he um, uploaded it and i was just wetting myself laughing it was hilarious and now we come to Jim, nice as knives. Grummish, as I said before, who is sadly no longer with us. And that is a, a tough one to say. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to um, pick your um, minds about what do you see about um, community and the importance of sticking together. But like I said, you know, um, there's a rift. And we all know this, most of us know this. So like I said, it's people who believe the mainstream narrative with the news and all the rest of it. And the people who question things and think, hold on, this isn't right, look where it's going, can't you see it? So how the hell are we all gonna come together? Because let me tell you this, if we manage this and everyone does come together, them up top, no power, zero power, nothing. And I know it's, it's frustrating because um, myself and like many of you watching right now 
we have been banging our heads against brick walls trying to wake people up to what's going on and the frustration <laughs> the frustration's insane it really is <clears throat> and um <clears throat> excuse me so yeah it is difficult it really is difficult yeah our knife techs here he is that's the guy i'm glad you were on with us mate we've just been talking about jim um this was the guy who i found out about um so yeah it's a tough one <clears throat> it really is i've just been saying you know the the differences that we had politically um was right at the opposite end of the spectrum but we still got on as mates we still uploaded certain funny things which we commented and laughed about and we talked about all sorts of stuff but what we come to realize is we discovered um the things which wound each other up and when we talked we left them out of the equation and we were still friends so is that possible or is it always going to be something that's always going to pop up in the news and it's going to trigger one of them and then it's a slang and match again it's a tough one <clears throat> hold on someone's just said volume is it can't you hear what i'm saying oh god i hope i've not been talking and no one's heard <laughs> i don't know but yes i haven't got me um microphones on i don't even know where the microphone is on this laptop to be fair so yeah anyway yeah where do we go from here so what i thought i'd do was um 10 o'clock when we all have a little drink like we usually do is um we do it in in jim's honor because like i say he was um he was a big member of the knife community and when i saw one of his vrs to one of my competitions the um, video responses like we've done back in them days um i done a, um, a giveaway and i wanted people to make a video um replying to this giveaway and it's called a vr i don't think youtube just don't do it no more because youtube's gone freaking stupid um but it's great fun lots of us creators used to um do this and one of the ones that i done was um what does the youtube community mean to you and anyone all around the world was free to enter the competition all they had to do is make a video telling people what youtube meant to them and I remember forget Jim's one, still to this day, and it was years ago, it was 10 years ago. And he said something like, um, he used to think that he had um, a problem, something wasn't quite right, where he really liked knives. And in the UK, I think he said um, only sort of butchers and fishermen or something like that were the only people really um, allowed to um, possess knives in the UK. And he thought he was the only one. But when he went onto YouTube and started looking into it, he soon realised that there is a community, and it's a huge community, the knife community. Um, not everyone in the knife community is a prepper, but there are lots of members in the knife community who are preppers. Um, and Jim, he loved it because he said um, what YouTube done for him was he he knew that he wasn't alone. And, and it's weird because how many of you watching now um, love watching YouTube and content creators um, because you know we speak some some people speak real talk from the heart and some people just you know there's idiots everywhere and you're always going to get that in any community so don't worry because there's always going to be idiots but Jim actually loved it and he fitted right in with the community um, and he used to do like a video every Friday and what he would do is he, he used to love collecting pocket knives and Here's one there. Some of you guys would probably know that. Um, Venga. And it's really hard to focus. Why the hell doesn't it focus? But yeah, we, we've got um, a, a fair decent collection of pocket knives. And some of the ones he used to make were case pennants, um, um, slips, loads of different um, pocket knives. And they used to be called nicest knives. And... What he used to do is he used to um, basically have a different beer or a different drink, and it used to be a really strong ale. Okay, we're talking porters are eight or nine percent strong stuff. And my dad, <coughs> a long time ago, he um, he said, "Yeah, try one of these." And it's one of these. It was a bottle of Doom Bar, right? Like I've said before, um, the Cornish beer, which is really nice. Um, 
it's not very strong so you can have a few of these and you're not going to be passing out or, or having fights with people all right it's a very good um middle of the road drink and i sent him um, a bottle of and a, and a couple of knives as a gift just to cheer him up because he was in the hospital or something and um yeah he used to um do sort of reviews on beer because as i said he used to be a cellarman in a biker's pub so a really rough pub and if any of you guys don't know salford and moss side etc around the manchester area yeah back in them days we're talking in the 70s and the 80s there was pretty much no man's land or no go areas around there and he used to work in a cellar in a biker's pub so he really knows about strong beers and stuff so he used to do a video um, of a beer and after that he would pick up one of his many many knives in his collection little pocket knives and he'd just do reviews giving people the specs on it what his thoughts were about the design appreciation and things like that so yeah 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 it's absolutely you know it's a bit of a loss to be frank because um I remember saying to him recently, he said, oh, mate, I really miss your um, your Friday um, YouTube videos. It was only for about five or ten minutes. But, yeah, like I said, um, one of those things, isn't it? You know, like I say, it doesn't matter if these, um, if you've got friends, whether they're far left or left or in the middle or whatever it is. You know, there has to be a common ground somewhere because at the end of the day, we're all humans, right? There's going to be something and it's a strange one without going too deep into all this but um yeah i'll miss him um it's a shock and i probably am in still a bit of shock it's like <laughs> why is it when someone goes it's it's literally most of the time anyway out of the blue i mean speaking of knives uh, does anyone know um evader knives his name's dave guy in america lovely guy hey how's it going hope everyone's having a great day that guy is on instagram evader knives really nice guy um about three or four days ago he lost his mum she died and he just went to bits but he's still got the attitude of going and moving forward and trying to make people laugh and now he's got to go um, into the house and get go for all of his staff and he's had a bad past and he said to me in a private message and he said lots of people wrote him off in the 90s as like he won't make it all of them people are dead all of them he's the only one left now his mum's gone um so not only does he do knives he started doing tattoos he's tattooing loads of people he's tattooed half of his own body he's a lovely guy i really like dave and um yeah it's just strange isn't it i mean other people in the community uh, <laughs> bloody hell dude honestly you don't have to do that i didn't even expect any donations at all brother yeah i'll miss him i really do and if you want to go um, into YouTube, type in Grummish. So it's G-R-U-M-M-S-H space Funky Prepper. You'll see all of the videos and all of the stuff, prizes and stuff we used to send him. And indeed, he sent me a few things. And it, it was such a shock. And because of the live stream was um, soon to come, I tried frantically to find one of the knives that he sent me. And it's a little Portuguese flat-sided knife. Looks almost like an open nail in design. And... Um, I need to find that. Well, I couldn't find it in time because we had to go live. But um, yeah, that is going to be a treasured knife. Just like um, the first prototype. Um, I think it was a Titan. I can't remember what it's called that. Lee, LB Custom Knives Made. That is one of my most treasured knives as well. Sentimental knives. Okay, so yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So how many of you guys are knife nuts out there? How many of you guys like knives? Because <laughs> I'll tell you what... Um, they're good all they are is their tools okay so forget all of the mainstream narrative of you know gangs whatever oh and i just i love little knives like this the design of it etc it's so ergonomic and it's wood scales as well and yeah there's lots of other cool little things on there <clears throat> i'll be honest i've used this a fair few times but only in the main blade i've not really used any of the other features it's pretty much like a multi-tool and I'll tell you what, that is one of, the, one of the best can openers you can use. If you guys like can openers, all right? And yeah, so every time I look at little pocket knives, I'm going to be thinking of Jim now. <clears throat> and he's got um, a similar um, situation to myself. Now, him and his wife, um, Emily, um, they were both like pagans, as it were. And they were both into 
you know, the, the wheel of the year, etc. I've dabbled a little bit in the pagan stuff and come out of it. Um, I've decided that I just like my own path and my own thing, and I don't belong to anything else. <clears throat> but I think it's important to experience it, try it. And if something's telling you, no, leave it, do your own thing, then you should do that, in my opinion. And, um, you know, my partner turned Christian as well um, during 2020, and his partner did too. So we both had the similar thing going on. We was there was both like loggerheads between the beliefs within um, the very close immediate um, couple relationship family. So we used to have a little laugh about things like that, and no doubt, you know, my partner and, and his um, wife Emily probably did too. But what I'm trying to say is um, there are far too many um, ways that people are segregated from each other. There's far too many. Um, um, boxes that people are put in so yeah it's weird hey London girl how's it going yeah bit of a weird one but um, I'm trying to remain upbeat but like I said um, in half an hour we can have a toast to our dear friend Jim and uh, yeah it's cool so yeah where do we go from here like I say you know the way the world's going and all the rest of it is there any chance that we can all come together and be peaceful and all the rest of it? Or some people might say it's too far gone, there's too many wars, there's too much stuff going on. Like I said, it's all orchestrated by serious money, clever people. And we're talking like probably the best psychologists that money can buy are all working for them. So it's no wonder how easy it has been over a long time thousands of years not just since 2020 this stuff's been going on for thousands of years and it's very clever how they do it and they know how we think they know how we react and they're playing us and that is the reasons why we've all fallen for this now if you want to go biblical um, there is a term called the um, apocalypse now straight away i would say half of you guys would probably think um, apocalypse um, end times um, mentioned in the bible etc but when you look at the dictionary and you can go way back to old dictionaries so the early 1900s the late 1800s i've got dictionaries of those times and let me tell you this they're way different than the pussy dictionaries they got now you know back then people understood very long complex words with nouns etc it's a big big difference you look at both dictionaries modern and old and you look at the word apocalypse and do you know what it means unveiling that's all it means is unveiling so like i said the powers that be whoever they are they've hijacked that and made people think that the apocalypse is the end of days no it's bs it's complete bs and it's another one of those billions of different things which they've done to alter how we think to keep us divided in my opinion anyway so yeah <laughs> it's a bonkers thing um so yeah this stuff goes way way back and like i said it's um it's no wonder how we've um, turned out how we are today and do you know what i remember um seeing this thing on instagram this morning um and it was this guy he's got quite a big following i think on instagram something um bricklayer <clears throat> And he was, I presume he was in London, I can't be sure. And there was a, a monument or a statue of Winston Churchill there. And there was um, two or three bin liners full up of rubbish just left next to it. And there was quite a few people around. I don't know if it was a protest, a demonstration, I really don't know. It's, it's just a little a snip of a video on Instagram, right? And this guy sort of um, went up to these bin liners, dragged them away from the Winston Churchill monument and um, started kicking all of the stuff which has fallen out everywhere, kicked it all away. And two police officers um, was walking past and he sort of went up to him and he was just saying, you know, what are we gonna do about this? Is people leaving rubbish over here? It's disrespectful, whatever. It's very hard to say because there was like lots of noise with people going on. And um, the thing that scared me the most out of all of that video was the police officers. Do you know why? Because they look very young they look, they had glasses on. They look like they've not got a fight in them. They just look like, you remember when you was at school, like um, the kid who always got picked on? Yes, they both looked like that. And they both looked like 
It's very hard to say, but once you've seen it for a while, and yes, it may come across as judgmental, but they looked very left and very woke, okay? These are young police officers. Now, that scared me more than anything else, because when you think about seeing things like that, and the next generation, you know what's going on with the alphabet people, as I refer to them as, with all of this nonsense, um, of all of this sex stuff going on at school with six-year-old kids, etc. It's disgusting, it's perverse, it's well out of order, and it shouldn't even be happening, but it is. And I believe it's more so in America. America's got it really bad. You know, the stuff that they're teaching six-year-old kids in American schools, I can't understand why there hasn't been a revolution just over that. And I'm sort of being led to believe that there is an element of that happening here in the UK as well. So when you consider these kids who are being brought up that way and taught all of this alphabet stuff, when they get older, eventually some of them will become police officers. And as we get older and we do nothing about all of this stuff that's going on right now, they are going to be the one questioning us, knocking on our doors, and they're going to be firmly behind the left agenda with climate change and all the rest of it. And they're just literally going to have a serious dose of cognitive dissonance when it comes to whatever anyone has to say to challenge what they stand for and the laws that they're um, up trying to uphold. And it's a very, very solemn, scary thought. So, yeah, I just wanted to know. Ah, oh, look at this. Yeah, someone's noticed it. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no fake. There you go. True players, dude. Yeah, DJ Hype Man. I follow on Instagram. I chat to him now and again. He's a busy guy, but I remember seeing him back in the days. Yeah. What an awesome DJ, DJ Hype. But yes, okay then. So we're going to see um, what you guys are saying. I'm sorry I've not read any any comments, um, etc. Um, who's on here? <laughs> oh, Faye, you on here? Hi, honey. Um, we got here. Day Tripper, awesome. Uh, ha, ha. Max Power, here we go. That's it, the traditional bricklayer. That's, did you see that? It popped up in my suggested feed when you scroll through reel, <clears throat> reels. Yeah, you probably see it as well. And yeah, when you see that on Instagram, those two police officers, honestly, my six-year-old, well, sorry, my five-year-old son could probably, yeah, it's ridiculous. I haven't got a fight in him. Sometimes he can just tell. And I know it sounds judgy, judgy. But yeah, like I've been saying, like I'm trying to present um, situational awareness, when you scan your situation and you're looking at people, and how I do it is um, I instantly look as many people as I possibly can, as quick as I can, and I make assumptions. And right or wrong, that's how I've done it. And I say to myself, if there was a fight between me and that guy, would I win or lose? And I say to myself, looking at some people, I would probably lose. All of the people that I see in that very, very fast assessment, um, they're a threat, a potential threat, okay? So yeah, when I saw them two coppers, no way, not threat at all, not a chance. So yes, these are seemingly coming through um, the new um, breed of police officer. And lots of the old school police, um, you know, they're all retiring now or they're near retirement. And lots of them, from what I've been hearing, can't wait to get out because of how ridiculous these laws are, which they have to uphold. You know, and I fully get it. You know, they've been on the thin blue line for a long time. Lots of them got PTSD, and it's no wonder, um, based on the nature of the job. And I also imagine lots of them just want to keep their head down a couple more years or whatever it is and get that pension and just go, I'm out of here. <clears throat> but the ones who are going to be replacing them. Yeah. Even though they haven't got a fight in them, they are going to be the ones causing lots of problems, especially if you have anything to say against the mainstream narrative. Okay. I mean, I would probably hazard a guess to say anyone who um, speaks out about anything, whatever the mainstream are putting out there, you're probably deemed far right. 
Now, I deem the term far right is to be like um, someone in the 70s, you know, like a skinhead or, you know, they like Hitler and all of this really bad stuff and they don't like colored people, etc. That's how I see as far right extremists. If you was to say, I think climate change stuff, which they're talking about is BS, you're being put into that group. Why? Really? For having an opinion? Okay, now if you're um, a right wing extremist, I would say that you're probably going to be um, an activist. You're going out on marches, you're physically causing trouble, you're organising lots of bad things. Okay, so why would someone who, who has done their own research and can probably prove that all of the mainstream narrative about climate change is BS, all of a sudden they're put into that far right, boom, enemy of the state? Really? I just don't think it's fair. And like I say, I think a lot of police officers probably um, agree. They probably, yeah, it sucks, but it's the law. What what can we do? We have to uphold the law because if we don't, we're literally going to have anarchy within 24 hours. 100% guaranteed. If you took every single police officer um, out of the equation in the UK within 24 hours, <laughs> this country would tear itself apart. It would, whether you love the police or you don't. I personally believe it's it's the impossible job. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You try your best. Lots of the old school coppers, um, they probably will listen to what you have to say, judge the situation and probably um, be a bit more lenient and a bit more, maybe a caution, let you go, don't do it again sort of thing. But I would say that these younger generation police officers, especially siding with this alphabet stuff, it's going to be the computer says no. You won't be able to um, appeal in a humanitarian way um, to sort of plead your innocence regarding said crimes or whatever. So, yeah, we are literally going down a really bad road. And like I say, the only way I can see out of this is everyone sat aside their differences and said, no, just basic non-compliance. Um, I don't believe in it. Um, you can't make me, I decide not to take part, thank you. And you just distance yourself on that, etc. It was quite funny because I saw a video um, Richard Ro Richard Vobes done the other day um, when he visited that guy in the woods. He lives in the woods in like um, a 2,000 square foot cabin. He's got 200 little chickens everywhere, two acres of land, beautiful place in Wiltshire, I believe. And he was saying along similar lines, you know, if enough people just say, no, we're not playing this silly game anymore. You know, we're not spending all of our hard-earned money on all of these ridiculous taxes, unfair taxes, and we're left with nothing. Our um, quality of life, our standard of living is nosediving and tanking by the week. You know, at some point, enough people are going to go, no, sorry, that's it, tough. And I remember doing um, a live stream um, a while ago, and I think it was September last year, the Magistrates' Courts, just in England, was, I think it was two two or three hundred thousand cases behind so have they caught up now is that figure higher i don't know because the only figures that i can find was back um in september so based on that you know lots of people this was in the public domain in the mainstream press so this isn't no conspiracy stuff this is factual okay and i think some of it was even sourced from the government figures and the ons the office of national statistics sinister so yes it's not made up and you know it only takes a few people to understand that look into it and that starts going out there i mean this was in the guardian it was in the mail it's in papers ages ago and you know, if people really understood that they might be inclined to say do you know what what's the chances of getting caught why are we doing this why am i spending all my money on all these taxes and paying all these bills and stuff which they're taking a the mick and when you see the profits like I said, with um, Ovo and Tesco's and all of these big price hikes. And look at the profits again. Look at all of the bonuses, the CEOs, um, the directors, etc. They're all <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank. So like I say, all the time that's going on, all of the time the mainstream media are pushing that, the more people are going to get seriously wound up by it all. And like I say, it's only a matter of time because there's no way that they could keep stretching this um, elastic band. At some point, it's just going to ping. 
and when it does especially with social media sharing um, any sort of significant change in society it's gonna snowball I mean it's gonna be a great big snowball down a mountain and it's gonna get bigger and faster and bigger and faster and yeah you can actually see it um, happening but like I say there's no way um, to predict when but one of the, the greatest things which the powers that be I don't know who they are I don't know where they are I don't know what they are but them with the mainstream media as their as a key asset to them as their mouthpiece they could literally create a news event which will um, divert and deflect anything which is looking towards like um, a nationwide sorry global uprising or awakening or whatever they're going to try every trick in the book to oh my god look what's happened in beirut oh my god guess what's happened in washington look at what's happening in alaska and all the time all of these things are happening it's just going to dilute that fire or that brew that's boiling away and try and turn the gas down a bit so they're masters at keeping fear on a knife edge they are absolute masters like i said they've had thousands of years to perfect their techniques and now they've got technology and don't forget one of the most important things which not many people are talking about now but it's just starting to and who remembers in the film the matrix where he uploads that program and they're sitting down on their chairs and they're looking around they've got a tv set there yeah who remembers that the birth of AI now that <laughs> I'll be honest it frightens the good Jesus out of me <laughs> it really does um, when you remember films like iRobot and things like this yes they're all predictive programming yes I understand they're all psyops etc but it certainly makes you think that if this AI thing runs a bit like it's predicted to do and you see the film like the Terminator and all of this <laughs> yeah really and what have we got we've got kids who don't even know what gender they are we've got kids who have got no testosterone there's no real young men anymore they're turning effeminate there's no fights in lots of them so can you imagine the the younger generation trying to sort of fight back anything coming down the pipe that way <laughs> thing is you know um, lots of you watching now probably in your 50s or whatever like myself and unless you keep in tip-top shape you ain't physically fighting nobody and we are going to need the younger generation on our side at some point because it's got to get bad before it gets good everyone can probably agree with that okay you're not going to wake up one day put the radio on and it's all been hijacked and it's not going to be v for vendetta where they've taken over the program and said oh guess what everything's going to be peaceful and happy from now on let's go out and celebrate no i think we've got to go through a seriously bad dark spell before anything remotely similar to that is going to unfold so yes uh i'm going to be jumping into the chat now and again just to see yeah there you go who remembers that video i've done when i've done the overnighter recently when i chopped down sorry just sawed up in big logs and i was carrying them and i said i'd love to see the snowflakes do this it's easy a monkey could do it I'm a log monkey and I'm taking my logs back to the camp. I doubt very much that some of these youngsters now couldn't even pick up one of them things. I'm in my 50s and I'm not a fit guy. So yeah, I remember when I was a kid, we used to run everywhere. We used to go out playing um, football till it was dark and then we'd come home, etc. We spent a lot of times outdoors as kids. Who remembers the play parks? Whether you're on um, an estate in a city or whether you went outside in the suburbs or whatever it is, there was always play parks and it was always packed for the kids nearly all the time. Okay, maybe not when it was hammering it down with rain, but when it stopped raining, whether it's cold, windy, sunny, there's still loads of kids there. You look at them now, what do you see? The odd toddler with a single parent mum, maybe, and that's it. Where's all the kids? Guess what? They're all at home with an Xbox. They're looking at a screen. They're not using their senses. They're not feeling. They're not touching. They're not smelling. Okay, so yeah, it's a massive attack on the senses of what's going on with kids these days. And the longer that they spend looking at screens and all of this stuff, 
they're missing out on so much um, real education, real things, not some flipping rectangular screen with anything on there which you can't prove is real. Another thing, deep fake. Who knows anything about deep fake? Well, that technology is literally exponential right now. It is growing so fast, so quick. At some point soon, and I predict this year, there is going to be an event on TV which is going to look so real, most people will believe it's real. But guess what? It will all be done by computer and you wouldn't know the difference. When it gets to that point, you know heard that term seeing is believing? No way, don't believe it. <laughs> like the film The Matrix, anything that you can see, touch, taste or smell, it's all signals interpreted by your brain. And if I can control that, the technology is there to do that probably quite easy you know who knows where we are are we in the simulation is this real <laughs> i remember this scientist this is it was a professor actually a long time ago in one of my books and i've got a massive library of good old books this scientist sorry professor he worked out when you look at um, atoms and molecules and nuclei he said that if you was to get every single nucleus inside of every atom physical everything solid on this planet and you put all of them together do you know how big it will be the size of a sugar cube mind blown yeah what's real really how do you know it's real <laughs> yeah i know we could go well deep on this and yes i know it's not prepping related and stuff but you know i'm just um free talking so, uh, yeah, if you, if you don't like it, you know, turn off, it's fine. I'll get it. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's been a weird one today with um, a good friend of mine just phew, gone, just like that. And um, the same happened to my mum when she passed away in 2020. Um, it's really weird. And it's, and it's probably a cliche, but if you have still got your parents, um, just tell them how much you love them and try... And make them laugh and give them little gifts out of the blue okay because one day all of the things oh i haven't got time i'm busy with the kids i've got this to do oh my god the car's playing up or whatever it is i'll go and see her next week and something else happened oh i'll go and see her the week after guess what in amongst that time something could happen and you never see him again happened to me don't let it happen to you if you do have loved ones and stuff especially parents oh thanks for that dude um matrix anthony yeah thanks for that donation brother and yes yeah the matrix for real i believe it i believe so you know it might not be exactly like the film the matrix but lots of people say that was a documentary you know just imagine though if that was real you somehow tuned out of this digital bloody holographic reality and then you woke up in one of them tanks and you got out of it and you saw these AI robots and stuff flying around in some weird world whoa some of us think we're awake imagine seeing that that's really awake that's oh my god I want to go back to sleep ignorance is bliss and this steak is juicy and delicious <laughs> so yeah I just thought I'd um, drop in here see what you guys are doing oh look at this andrew yes yeah we're not far away we're only about five or six minutes away from drink oh here we go look at this someone said this chat um gbt well <laughs> if any of you guys um saw um a person which i had on this channel doing a live stream his name's jason brashears if you want to watch that live stream that guy will blow your mind if you go to his youtube channel it's called archaics that the things that he asked the us um chat gpt whatever it is whoa all i can say summarizing what his discoveries were based on using chat gdp history online is being edited every second of the day right now in real time that is why he is taking it upon himself 
and there is many others around the planet doing the same, is searching for old books about as much history as they can um, uncover about our true past of what's happened. You know, are we the only civilization? Well, there's civilizations before us that have restarted. Some people say there's been at least six or seven um, of these happened in the past. They got to a point where the tipping point is reached and boom, all of that civilization, all the majority is gone and they start from scratch. Another X amount of years pass, it gets to the same again, boom, everyone's wiped out. And yeah, some even believe that we're overdue that now. And some people say it's not far away. But when he looks into the Phoenix phenomenon, he has pretty much predicted in 2040, on the 16th of May, there won't be many of us left. <laughs> Who knows if any of us are going to make it till then with all of his crazy weird stuff going on. I mean, we've already seen um, how many people are no longer with us because of that. And that, from what I understand, was just a test. Imagine if that was real. Imagine if... You know, when 2020 happened, imagine if all of the hospitals in the UK had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of really sick, dying people flooding the doors outside to get in. Did that, did that actually happen? No, it was a test. But if it was real, that would have probably happened. But it never did. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I do like to try and live for now and not dwell too much in the future. Because... The future hasn't happened yet. The past is gone. There's nothing you can do about the past or the future. All you've got to worry about is right now. Why don't worry about it? Enjoy. <laughs> That's my advice. Take it or leave it. Uh, what else have we got? 12,000 years. Yeah. 12,000 years, 6,000 years. There's all sorts. And I think what Jason was saying is if, if you, any book um, published... Um, globally, I think after the year of 1930 or 1940, anything after that, it's not very um, accurately portrayed. Okay, but when you go right back to the 19th century, look at some of his books. Then, another weird thing was something happened in 1902, something so crazy all the way around the world. There's not much historical. Um, reports about what happened in 1902 and if any of you guys have come across them the guy charles fort in your research um he's wrote an amazing book which i've still yet to complete because it's a big book it's a very thick book called um the book of the damned and now it's nothing to do with um, the devil or nothing sinister nothing it all it is is just an amalgamation of um, research based on all of the unexplained stuff which has happened all the way around the planet right back in the 19th century it's astonishing the stuff that was being reported <laughs> and this book has got it all in there you won't believe you just literally won't believe the stuff that's in that book <laughs> incredible but even he said 1902 so many weird things happened um, in the sky like we had a second sun and the star going or changing. Lots of things happened. There was red mud and red dust everywhere. And you try and find reports of that. It was literally all of 1902 was whitewashed, gone, disappeared. Even the New York Stock Exchange, it was pretty much a brand new building. 1902, they demolished the whole thing and rebuilt it. There is a lot going on which we just don't know. But if you want to know more about this sort of stuff i really recommend that you go to archaics um a r c h a i x artificial intelligence x and it's a big um huge huge research project i mean this guy spent years and years and years in prison and all he done was read lots of old books and the more books he read you've heard that guy um graham hancock and some of these people on gaia if you believe any of that stuff is absolutely just smashed all of their theories to bits. There is fundamentally not one single piece of decent source information backing up any of their claims about everything. Yeah, it's mind blowing. I like to watch that sort of stuff in the evenings rather than, you know, 
look at my knife collection or whatever it is. But anyway, that time has come. And this is for our friend. And here is the glass that he sent to me. Like I said, he had two of these. He was kind enough to send me one of them. And this is the glass. It's an original King George pint pot. Okay, genuine, old school, amazing pot. And I sent him one of these, which he liked. And I just happened to have one. So we're going to have a drink for an old friend who is no longer with us. Yeah, I wonder what he's doing right now. Anyway, Jim, if you're out there, mate, and you can see this, um, I hope you like um, this weird, strange one-off live stream. So because he was a cellar man in a biker's pub, he got to know how to pour a pint correctly. So if I bugger this up, I'm going to burn in hell for an eternity. <laughs> so I'm not. I am not going to get this wrong. So we do that. This is how I'll pour my pint. There we go. So Jim, my friend who is not here anymore, nicest knives, Mr. Grummish. Here's to you, fella. Rest in peace, brother. That's what he used to do. He used to get like um, all of the foam around his moustache and go. <laughs> Always made me laugh when he do that. In fact, I remember leaving comments saying just that sort of thing. So yeah, I hope you guys are. Um... <laughs> do you want a flake in that? <laughs> flake in what? <laughs> Guy, mate. Mm. That really is a good beer, actually. And guess what? It's one of the cheapest that you do in the supermarket, so bonus. Um, what about the pole shifts? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're <laughs> the poles are shifting every day. It's crazy. In fact, when you look at how crazy the locations of the North and the South Pole, man. There is big things happening that, but when you're talking at a complete um, inverted pole shift, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why not? As I say, there's so much going on which we don't know. Um, NASA, never a straight answer. That's what NASA. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's what NASA stands for. So when you see these little um videos or on TV or whatever it is of the International Space Station and all up there floating around and stuff. How many of you guys have seen some of the videos where when you slow it down and you zoom in you can see little wires on them pulling them around and stuff? Yeah, how do we really know that they're up in space and they're floating around in zero gravity? How do we actually know that? If you watch really good documentary, um, you can buy on DVD I'm not sure if it's on YouTube, <coughs> but it's called Kubrick's Odyssey by Jay Widener. If you watch that, with all of the stuff that Stanley Kubrick exposed in lots of his films about the fake moon landings and how he was part of it and stuff. Oh my days. You know, that was back then. And Stanley Kubrick was literally given an unlimited budget to make any films that he wanted. Anything. And Eyes Wide Shut was the last film that he made before he mysteriously died. And there was about 30, 30 or 50 minutes, I can't quite remember, actually cut out of that film. Because he was exposing so many things behind the scene. If you look at the film The Shining, who remembers The Shining? Really good film with Jack Nicholson. Well, when you look at Danny, he's standing in um, the corridor. Sorry, he's kneeling down. And look at his jumper when he stands up he's got the Apollo 11 and he walks down the corridor to one door which is opened in 237 that's the number of the, the room in the hotel I guess how many miles it is from the earth to the moon 237 thousand miles There's so many things which is exposed in that film trying to get um, intuitive intelligent people to understand what has happened and I think even Neil Armstrong has admitted somewhere that we weren't up on the moon etc 
And honestly, it just goes massive. And I know this isn't prepping, etc. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's nuts. But it's a good documentary. If, you, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, I highly recommend um, Kubrick's Odyssey by Jay Widener. Really, really good. And I think even um, Jason Brashears from Archaics, he said, you can actually go to the official um, NASA documents and look at the inventory or Americans call it inventory of what they took to the first moon landing with all of them cameras etc guess what nothing on that list about lighting so where did they get all the lighting from if they was on the opposite side of the moon for where the Sun was so if it was on the, the moon where the Sun was it had been so bright the radiation etc and he wouldn't be able to photograph or film anything so they went on the other side but it was dark on that side and there was no lights on the inventory and yet when you see the photographs of the shadows of two lights with two shadows <laughs> honestly if you don't start asking questions if you don't think well i think what 2020 is um taught everyone is have you heard that term um the bigger the lie the more believable it is yeah look at what happened in 2020 Lots of people are discovering that's a huge lie. The, the whole thing falls apart. The whole thing can be debunked quite easily. But the majority of the people would say they wouldn't do that, would they? No, they couldn't do that because they couldn't keep it a secret. Someone would say something. <laughs> it's a classic. I've heard it all before. It really is nuts. <clears throat> so, yeah. Look at this. Who's seen the film They Live? That's another good film as well, if you watch that and you really understand that film. That's good. There are quite a few films out there which um, try to expose stuff or make people see things in a certain way. In actual fact, um, what films have you seen? Any film, doesn't matter if it's old, it came out last week, it doesn't matter if it's on Netflix, but what films or movies, if you're in um, America, what films would you recommend people watch um, which has exposed um, ideology or hidden symbolism within it? That would be really interesting. So, yeah, you guys feel free. Whack it in the comment section. Or if you're watching live right now, yeah, put it into the chat because I've enabled chat replay. So once this is uploaded, it might take up to an hour. But once that's passed, all of this live stream chat will be visible um jaws 2 mate honestly if you're going to be stupid don't bother because you know what i mean we're, we're um we're adults here fifa vendetta yeah 1984 groundhog day that's interesting very very interesting um okay so we're going to start groundhog day was the first one um, matrix definitely oh yeah one by one that's very interesting now, well done to AGS1973. 1973, so you're two years younger than me. Um, yes. Has anyone seen that film? Rick Mail's last film. Yeah. And he mysteriously died of a cardiac event whilst jogging. Fit as a fiddle. Nothing wrong with him. If you haven't seen that film, one by one, with Rick Mail, watch it. Especially if you're just waking up. And don't worry, we've all been there. We've all started to wake up, okay? But that... That will absolutely um, make you think about a lot of things. Back to the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there you go. Now, Deep in a Bunker, fair play. I still need to see that film, Doctor Strangelove, because that was Stanley Kubrick's first film, I believe. And there is supposed to be um, things in there. But I think he didn't actually start doing exposés. Um, until 2001 Space Odyssey and after okay but nonetheless these are good historical films to at least check and look for clues because there's clues in Stanley Kubrick's films like you would not believe look at the Overlook Hotel with the eagle on there and all of the ho the hotel I think that room represented America and the Empire changed from Rome to America honestly this stuff goes way deep and I don't, you know, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Some of you think I'm nuts, but it is what it is. Um, 
Oh, what's this? Someone called Doug Out. Um, hi, welcome. I don't think I've seen you on there very often. You probably knew, that's cool. Um, I've never viewed this world as most do. It was a lonely place to be until 2020. Now more see it as I do. <laughs> yeah, I really do think, um, well, for me personally, and this goes back through the older generations, there's probably events which they believe would be, I call triggers. So a trigger event for me, the first one would be 9-11, for sure. Second one would be 2020, what happened then. Two big important triggers. And somewhere um, in and around after that time was the Georgia Guidestones. If you guys don't know anything about that, look into it. It would uh, make you think differently about a lot of things, especially with all of the things that are being planned. Um, yeah, 1984, yeah, that film. Oh my God, it's disgusting, that film. <laughs> Final warning, 1981. Oh, that's a new one. I've not seen that. It says sci-fi. It's not in sci-fi, but sci-fi. Final warning, 1981. Hmm. Was it made then, or is it made about then, or I don't know. It's a new one to me. What's this? Ghostbusters 2 with the stream of hate. I don't even know if I've seen Ghostbusters 2. I'll tell you what, though. Ghostbusters 1, you know, that ritual which happened on top of that building. Yeah. Man, I watched that as a kid. There's no way I'd ever let my son see stuff like that until he was at least like 14 or 15. That stuff, no way. End game, Alex Jones. Oh, yeah, Alex Jones, awesome. Um, Contagion, yes, I bought that DVD. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yep. Rosemary's Baby, <coughs> that's interesting. Um, I do recall the title. I may have even seen the film, but it would have been a long time ago. Um, there was, was there another one about Cradle Rocking or something? I thought it could be the same film. But well, it'd be interesting to see what that's got. Um, stuff. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look, um, just watch The Simpsons. Oh my God, yeah, that's a very valid point. God, bloody flying here. There's been loads of stuff that The Simpsons have been um, uncovering, haven't there? Yeah, 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 for sure. And it does make you think, doesn't it? Who's involved? What do they know? And in fact, um, I think I mentioned this recently, but for some of you guys who didn't hear me say it, um, a good film to watch is THX 1138. THX 1138. Watch that film. It's George Lucas's first um, feature film. And it would come out just before Star Wars. You know, the 1977 um, New Hope. Um, Star Wars 1 for me. But um, you can even hear all of the same sort of sound effects and the same film styles in THX 1138. And that... That film is incredible. I got the um, special edition DVD, and when um, Spielberg's interviewed on there, he said he remembers very vividly that they used to spend hours and hours talking about the NWO, if you understand what I'm saying. And this was back then. So it makes you wonder, was he on the inside? Was he um, rubbing shoulders with people who were? And he had some idea of what was going on, how it's going on roughly how long it's going to take interesting i find it interesting i've not heard of this one gods of egypt that's a, i've never heard of that but no it's good that you guys are putting this up there because what's happening is i am getting contacted by lots of people who are waking up right now not right this second but in these times and if these people watch these live streams and look at the chat they're going to be seeing all of these film recommendations by you guys Oh, yeah. Rachel Gregory Gregory Art. Oh, you must be an artist. Oh, fair play to you, sweetheart. Mm. Yeah, Jim, rest in power. Um, I don't know what this is. Early warning movie. No, I'm not heard of that. V for visitors. I do remember V in the 80s. You remember that series that's on TV? And there was also, there was another one. I think I've got the DVD set of that. It must have been on some 
series or something on some TV network, but someone I work with recommended it and I watched it and I was like, whoa. And I ended up buying, I don't know, a DVD with six of them on there or something. Um, the feed that we've done recently within the last 10 years. That's quite interesting to see. Um, oh, look at this. Here we go, Gary Darcy. Now that was the film which changed my life. That film right there, Loose Change. I saw that in 2008. Yeah, so yep, yeah, I was a regular Joe. Um, right up until the moment I saw that film, that changed everything. What that done, and you can debate all you want about um, um, the time it was released, who was involved in its production, it doesn't matter. Like I said, if any of you guys like what Russell Brand's doing, and you're interested to hear what he's saying, and you're new to this information, it doesn't matter. And you, lots of people know my views about Russell Brand, but it really doesn't matter who's doing it or who's behind it. The point is, is people are questioning things after they've seen or heard stuff like this change and what Russell Brand's doing. That's the most important thing. Oh, the running man. Yeah, that goes into... Um, Hunger Games sort of thing, isn't it? Where it's like a game show or whatever it is. And they Live. Russell, absolutely on point. Everyone should see They Live. You could probably find it on eBay for a four or five quid. You might even find it in a charity shop. Okay, But if you've never seen it, watch that film. <laughs> the Terminator movies, yeah, I've got all of them. Um, I still need to sit down one day and watch them. But yeah, I think there's references to Skynet. Yeah, insane. I've actually worked on Skynet for real. And I can't really talk about it because I did sign the Official Secrets Act when I was working on that project. But yeah, absolutely, it's real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no worry, Carol. Better late than never. <coughs> That's cool. Um, what else is there? Oh, Fred's. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Oh, man. If you want to get depressed, watch Fred's. <laughs> There we go. Excellent book. I've read that four times now. Um, I've got three copies of that, different editions. It's a very good book. Um, I liked it so much that I um, invested a lot of money in the original, and they're rare now, the essays of Aldous Huxley, the complete volume set of essays which he writ. And his social commentary back in the day was incredibly, impeccably presented. And the terminologies used, the research, his own personal thoughts was incredible. And yes, he was in the Fabian Society, the same as George Orwell. But nonetheless, the social um, engineering um, in Brave New World. And do you know what? That's interesting that you say that because there was supposed to be a film made about Brave New World. And our WEF friend, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, was due to star in it. I think they pulled production. I think it was one week before it's due to start. So something happened about the release of that film. Maybe it was a bit close to the mark because people are waking up now and it was why it wasn't ever made. But yeah, interesting. If you know anything about that, let us know in the chat and in the comments because um, I would love to have seen that film um, because I read the book. You know when you read a book without seeing a film and you can imagine in your mind how the book is um, reading. Sometimes films ruin books, you know what I mean? So... Uh, right. Total Recall, yeah. In fact, Arnie, who remembers back in 2020 how he was, um, what he was saying on social media, like Instagram and stuff? Well, that guy's literally just, phew, yeah, lost a lot of respect, Mr. Schwarzenegger. Bloody hell. Um, yeah, Emma, absolutely. Lots of people said 1984. If you've not seen that film, yeah. It's um it's depressing, same as Fred's, but it's not supposed to be. Um, the Truman Show. Do you know what? I've never seen that. My partner's seen it. He goes, yeah, yeah, everyone's seen that. I'm not really a fan of Jim Carrey, to be honest. I think I've seen Dumb and Dumber, one and maybe two. Um, but no, no, nah, it's not for me. But no, it's supposed to be quite good. Anyway, nonetheless. Yeah, Dean, thanks, dude. Yeah, if you can hit the thumbs up, that really helps. And I think someone's donated on PayPal. I'm not really expecting any donations at all um, this evening, people. But, yeah, it's 
It's absolutely awesome when you guys do that. Let's see. Oh, bloody phone. God. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, what? <laughs> Um, Andrew and Louise, thank you for them donations on PayPal. Like I say, you don't have to, um, but I'm, I really appreciate it. I seriously do. Oh, here we go. Trading Places. Now, that is an interesting film. That is, I would say Trading Places. I would probably put that in my top 50 all-time favourite films. That's a very good film. And if any of you guys, um, if any of you guys know the guy who directed that, and his relationship with the Rockefellers, etc., and tax. Yeah, he is no longer with us. But nonetheless, that's a very good film. Very good film. I really did like that. What else? Oh, what's happened there? Um, I don't know what that is. Situ. Is that a, is that a film? Situ? No idea. Here we go, the Amiga Man. What isn't it clicking? Oh, I've got to hide that. Oh, God. Is it going to freeze up on me? I don't know what's happening now. I can't get out of anything. Hmm. Can you still hear me? Is it still working? <laughs> I don't know. I can't get that off the screen. Let me try something. Yeah. I just remember I got all of these. Um... There we go, from They Live. No, it's not working. Right, we're back in the room. How weird was that? I looked at my screen, it said two, 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 two. All the twos. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm back. <clears throat> In fact, let me just see if I can... Yes, I think that's the volume working. Yeah, we're going back to... I think you guys said um, they live. Yeah, this is for you. They live. Family. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. It's all out of bubble gum, guys. <laughs> right. Yes. I remember to hide that that comment. Cool. What else is there? Um. Oh, here's another one. Who remembers what film this is from? I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's probably a good film to see. I haven't seen that for a long, long time. Uh, well, weird. Yeah, Blade Runner. Yeah, Blade Runner. I, I wasn't. I don't think I ever saw it until about four years ago. Yeah, it's a pretty cool film. But um, yeah, maybe I should have seen it back in the day. But it's all right. I don't think it's like the best film ever made, sort of thing. Um, WTF? No, I don't know what film that is. You're all strange, you are, dude. <laughs> Honestly. Um, okay, face off, what's this, Jamie Lee Curtis, a boy apparently, what's that, are you saying that Jamie Lee Curtis is, is not a lady, or is that the name of the film called, a boy apparently, I've never heard of it, <laughs> like I said, oh wait, oh yes, yeah, Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> I remember. God, I forgot about that, mate. Yeah. The the vodka and your um, bottle with the sauce. Yeah. Wow. Out of order. Oh, my God. Yeah. Be interesting to see um, what films um, Jim would have seen out of all of the ones I'm reading out. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Right. All right. Yeah, this is awesome, you guys. You've put lots of cool films in, which I've never heard of before. 
that's not the first time that that's happened, by the way. Um, yeah, and it's weird because I've seen live streams of people not talking. Oh my god, if you're religious, look at that six 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 people in the chat. <laughs> Where you know, don't worry, it's um, it's six one six. I think it's the real thing how it was perceived. But anyway, <laughs> gremlins. Wow, really? Was there hidden stuff in gremlins that which was depicting stuff? I barely remember it. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a kids' film, really, wasn't it? Yeah, Roddy Piper. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He used to watch WWF wrestling. Do you remember him? Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yeah, and The Undertaker, the Bushwhackers, they're my favourite. Them two lunatics. There you go. Oh, yeah, Robocop. I'm just coming down. Scanners. Do you know what? I think I might have seen that once. Uh, yeah, I can't really remember it, to be honest. Now, here we go. Well said, Steve. I love you for bringing up that film. Who has seen the film Dark City? I've not seen a version. I have got one version on DVD, and it's Dark City, the director's cut. That one was really, really doing um, the rounds in conspiratorial forums a long time ago. Um, I haven't seen another version, but I have seen the director's cut. That is the, the one to get. If you've not seen Dark City, the director's cut, put it on the shopping list. You'll probably get it cheap as anything now because it's made years ago. That was a really good film. And yes, I don't want to spoil um, it if you guys haven't seen it. But Steve, yes, there is a lot in that film, honestly. Um, I've not seen this. Um, Await further instructions, 2018. No, Sue, it's a new one on me. <coughs> um, the Da Vinci Code. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there, isn't there? Interesting. What, that car film? Seriously? No way. Kingsman. Yeah, I spoke about that with these um, mobile phone alert things which happened um, not that long ago. Yeah, that's a pretty good film, actually. I quite like that. Jacob's Ladder. Oh my God, Jacob's Ladder. Yeah, if any of you guys have done trips before, don't watch that at the same time. <laughs> um, the Lawnmower Man. Maybe I'll get mixed up. <laughs> mm. Wow. Oh, there we go. Brewster's Millions. Yeah, that's a good film. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't watched it with um, um, Awake Eyes, if you know what I mean. I watched that a long time ago. What else is there? The Running Man. Yeah, Night Brother. Good to see you in here again. Diddly diddly diddly. Here he goes. All right. For new... What's this? For new Predator Prey. Prey look a good film. Predator Prey. I've got no idea what that means. There we go, Apocalypse Now. That is a fantastic film. If you watch the Redux version, it's the full-length uncut one. Apocalypse Now Redux. Definitely see that. Um, yeah, it does show a bit of the military industrial complex in there. And of um, key target assassinations. Yeah, there's probably a lot of CIA stuff um, within that. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, never seen it. No idea what that's like. Um, yes, I've seen a few clips in that film, but I've not seen the whole thing. Definitely referring to the mainstream media's um, tactics, for sure. Um, this is good that you guys are hitting me up with this. Wow. I've got no idea what that means. <laughs> I really don't. Yes, definitely, definitely worth watching that film. Mm hmm. That's a good. There's a lot of stuff in that film. Well said. Um, that was Ben. Well said, Ben. Oh. 
Oh, oh, I think some of these are BS, really. Deer Hunter. I'm not saying your suggestion is BS, by the way. I'm just saying, wow. If I remember watching it, I don't remember seeing anything which is untoward in that film. There you go. Well said. Mixy Equilibrium. You guys need to see that film. Very, very interesting, especially with what's been going on recently. Okay. Um, if you've not seen um, that film there, make a screenshot of it because you're never going to forget, never going to remember how to spell it. Equilibrium. You can probably find that really cheap on eBay. A couple of quid at max. That's a good film. Christian Bale. Um, I've not watched any of the Batman stuff. I don't really do the superhero thing. But um, yeah, and he was an American psycho, I think. I remember seeing that. But no, that is a good film. And um, it's very similar to Thief of Vendetta as regards um, people being hunted down with um, truth books, as it were, it, moving into the future. Lots of people are um, surviving with that, etc. It's a good film. Yes, and the clerics. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Woo ha, woo ha. <laughs> For sure. Oh, right. Okay. MK. I don't even know if I can say that on this platform, but yeah, I know. I know. I know a lot about that. Wow, that's not been talked about for a long time. Yeah, that rings a bell. Hell high now. Is that the one which just got full up with like lots of bad language? I can't remember. I might have seen it. It rings a bell. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh. oh, The Wicker Man. Yes, I love that film. Yeah, that's a good film. Awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. Clockwork Orange. 100%. Yes, sir. Clockwork Orange. Um, again, what the woman said about MK blah blah that is definitely linked to that film yes watch that one in fact all of the films that stanley kubrick done from 2001 space odyssey right up to eyes wide shut watch them all and really understand symbolism and how things are presented okay it's, it's an eye opener yeah especially in eyes wide shut with all of them trees positioned and stuff but honestly it just goes well it goes way, way over lots of people's heads. Lots of things. He was a master, Stanley Kubrick. He was an absolute master, a genius. There's not many filmmakers like that. He probably the only one. Whoa. Medication Tom. Hellraiser. God, I remember that. My Dominion. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, play old pinhead. Um, scanners. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm sure I'll see it once because I remember in the 80s I always saw the that picture on the um, VHS um, cassettes down at, when he used to rent out VHS cassettes. I always remember that picture. I like, and I remember watching it years later and I thought, oh, it's crap. <laughs> it's just really... Oh, there you go. Two good films. London Girl. Kaz, you're well on point there. Saul in Green, amazing film. Logan's Run. Logan's Run is in my top 50 favourite all-time film. I absolutely love that film. And yes, you know, I'll be honest, I did have a, um, a bit of a crush on her <laughs> when that film was out. Um, Jenny Agata, yeah, man, absolutely beautiful woman. Yeah, really good film, Logan's Run, I love that. Yeah, Fruits of the Sea. <laughs> awesome. Escape from New York, Snake Pliskin. Yeah, Larry, on point, absolutely uh wow yeah you guys are awesome you're putting lots of stuff out there capricorn one i'll tell you a film which most people have probably not seen who has seen um quiet earth have you seen that quiet earth it's um, an australian film this guy wakes up one morning he's the only one on the planet earth it's incredible but over some time he finds this woman and then he finds this other guy and it's such a weird thing with time and then something happens in certain places and he ends up waking up on a planet on a beach and instead of like the moon or the sun coming up in the morning it's saturn the ending is amazing quiet earth watch that film it's really really cool 
Um, it's an old Australian film, but quite Earth. Yep, I might do like um, um, something on my website about my recommended films to watch. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you think that's a cool idea. I can do something like that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bloody hell, look at these all. Oh my God, do you know what? Yeah, look, The Shining. Yeah, that is that is one of my top 50 films. Yeah, if you watch Footprints, if you watch um, Kubrick's Odyssey by J. Widener, W-E-I-D-N-E-R, J. Widener. If you can find that DVD, it's probably rare and hard now. I don't even know if it's going to be expensive, but that uncovers loads of stuff. Loads of stuff, what Stanley Kubrick done. And that film, The Shining, once you've watched Jane, um, Jay Widener's presentation about it, then watch it again. Especially if you've seen The Shining a few times. You're going to look at it and go, oh my God, the guy's right. He points at everything. It's incredible. The symbol symbology, the positioning of things, the certain things that are said, the numbers, what the characters represent at certain points of the film. Honestly, man, it's, it's incredible. Jay Widener. I'd love to see if he's doing some more work and stuff. <laughs> Quite a mess. Yeah, bloody hell. I'll tell you what no one's um, put on there. Has anyone seen um, Children of Men? Really good film. Children of Men. Um, who did I see talk about this very recently? Oh, God. It was someone on YouTube recently. It's, it's escaped. It's just left my my mind at the moment. But it was talking about um, um, what do they call it? The reproductive rate is just going like this. And yeah, you watch um, Children of Men if you've never seen it. Whoa. And incidentally, there's, um, there's a scene in that film, Children of Men. It's the historically one of the longest, bestest single take um, piece of film from um, a fight scene. Oh my God. It's, it's amazing. It, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps. Look at that. Just remembering that part of the film, Children of Men where um, there is like um, the youngest person on the planet is like 13 and it just died and the next person's 26 no baby is being born and this girl this this guy finds this girl and she's pregnant and it's just like my god how they get to the end of the film it's amazing but there's a combat scene in that film which is incredible i love the film so much i ended up getting um the genuine original um, camo fatigues, which was worn in that film. It's the helmet, the flak vest, the trousers, the smock, everything. So yeah, it's like, a, it's, um, they designed the camouflage, an urban camouflage set in the future for that film. And I've got the original. Yeah, that's awesome as hell. It's really, really cool. But yeah, it's a good film, if you've not seen that. Yeah, Fred's. Oh man, that was um. Yeah, I remember seeing that back in the eighties, and when that woman's um, I think given birth or she was raped or something at the end, that was really yeah, crazy. If you're in a bad place, don't watch Fred's. Honestly, it's it's a hard hitting bad film. <clears throat> anyway, bloody hell! I just noticed the time. Look at that. It's twenty minutes to eleven. <sighs> Sorry to have bugged up your Saturday evening. Or oh, if you've enjoyed it, let me know. I've brought it right down to the latest comments now. Oh my God, someone's donated something. Wow, Merry Christmas. Hey, a regular welcome. Thank you. I'm home. Red rum, red rum. Oh yeah, you're talking about the shining, isn't you, with Danny. Danny. Oh, man. Do you know what I'll have to get, because my partner won't be around any films like that. She said, if you want to watch stuff like that, tell me, and she's going to go out and see her friend. So, um, yeah, <laughs> bloody hell. Now, if you want to see a funny film, watch that. Yeah, I love that film. That's in my top 50. That's me. Strawberry. Oh, my God, you're having flashbacks, man. Strawberry. Right, okay. You guys have been awesome. Thanks ever so much for coming along. Um, everyone has donated as well. I didn't expect any, any donations at all. 
So absolutely, you guys are on point, and um, yeah, every penny helps. Seriously. Um, yeah, looking at that knife and just remembering how we started when we were talking about Jim. Yeah, I'm missing him already, you know. Never going to get to talk to him again. Never going to have a laugh. Never going to have a chat. Never going to have a catch-up, etc. No more videos from Jim. He's gone. Gone for good. So, yeah, rest in peace, Jim. If you're up there or around there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> he used to love um, the jokes about what we used to do at school. Do you remember? The cock and balls. He used to love doing stuff like that. Yeah. I used to send him like pictures of stuff scribbled on bus stops and it'd always make his day and have a laugh because it brought him back to being a kid at school when he'd always draw little cocks everywhere. <laughs> Silly things, I know, but yeah, they're cool. So yes, here's to you, Jim, brother. Rest in peace. And um, I'll see you one day on the other side, as all of us will. Cheers, buddy. Right, thanks everyone for taking part in the um, the comments and indeed if you're watching on the replay, thanks for watching this rather strange off the cuff live stream. Like I said, I had loads of plans, but you know one of my good friends just died and it's just gone a bit. Mm. So yeah, everyone who's turned up and contributed to the chat, I'll try and find time. I haven't got around to reading yesterday's yet the the replay because there's a lot of um, stuff going on in there. And everyone has donated, absolutely awesome. If you can, it's brilliant. I mean, lots of people do it on PayPal during the week. All the links are below the video. Um, and the moderators, <laughs> you moderators, honestly, the unsung heroes. Fantastic, you lot. Oh my God, I've just seen something here. Here it is. Oh, just about to turn it all off. The Metaphysics of South Park. Kenny, the Sapphire Parker. Ah, South Park. Yes, I have heard that before. Sticky marks. Thanks for that donation as well. You got in just at the end, so I'm just about to turn it all off. <laughs> so yeah, appreciate it. So all of you mods, honestly, thanks for taking your time um, out of your schedule to um, monitor all of this. And um, yeah, Wicked, we're going to be doing loads of videos um, this week. Lots, okay? So stand by. I'm going to be trying to do two or three every single day. And the Bushcraft Show on Friday, I'm going to try my best. Now, if any of you guys want to pray for me, please pray. It will count to do a live stream from the Bushcraft Show. I don't think anyone's ever done it before, so it's going to be epic. And guess what? Do you know how many people are expected to go to the Bushcraft Show? Not many people know this. Ten thousand people yeah i oh, know and they want me to run the preface section <laughs> mental so if you are going to the bush cross show brilliant i'll see you there on saturday um if not stay tuned for videos and stuff during the week and a wicked live stream if i can pull it off so yeah you guys take care i'm going to um try and enjoy the rest of my evening now and um enjoy the weather because it's set fair thanks for watching guys stay funky <laughs>